Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got the whole family with me. Hey y'all. And today we're talking about clocks. We're here in the end times that we're supposed to get an increase in knowledge. Well, how be it, one of the first places that we can see evidence of this is with the clock. The same clock that we have on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I've been searching around the web to see if anybody else has talked about this, what we're going to talk about in this class. Um, like I said before, I could be secondary confirmation, but I've gotten this firsthand, this information about this clock, and I believe today in this class, we're going to learn how to tell time. All right. Um, just as a quick demonstration, we're going to get into more of the detail, but just as a quick demonstration, I brought you guys in just to show you kind of a trick, something we could use maybe even on our science teacher. Mm -hmm. If you would... Give me a time of a sunset. Y'all know when sunset is? Time of a sunset? Sun so the time that Journey's chosen is 545. So I'm going to draw a clock on here. And I'm going to draw out 545. Now, with the combination of the sun set data, when the sunset is, and this clock here, I could tell you that this day actually falls right here in winter time. Okay. You're gonna that be sunset here? is in winter time. Huh? You're going to be able to prove to us that that's in winter time. Hold on, Daddy. I'm going to prove more than that. It's in winter time. It looks like it's somewhere around February. Our clocks, along with the sunset data, allows us to calculate the months and seasons. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's come all the way back to the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 14, where we learn that our father's timepieces are the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, that's about all that our Bible offers us as far as how the father's timepieces work. But we do see in the book of Jubilees down in about verse 23 that it is important to understand how our father's sacred calendar works. Else we will lose track of the seasons, the feast days, the Sabbath days, and the new moons. Well, it's not too hard to understand how we're in that state now. It is the result of forgetting how our father's sacred calendar works. So let's come over to the book of Enoch, which is the authority on the sacred calendar. Now, don't get this confused with the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai. This one is not the same book at all. If you read, this book was written in the 21st century by authors who used the Thummim and the Urim. In other words, they claim to have contacted and interviewed Enoch about the calendar. Well, I have no problem with how they came up with the information to write their book, but I do see contradictions in what they've written and what Enoch wrote himself. So let's come over to the book of Enoch, looking at three particular translations. And I like the 1883 one there myself. Some could call it the Krakatoa translation. But anyway, we'll save that for another video. But for the sake of time, we're going to come all the way down to chapter 72 of the book of Enoch, which begins the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. This is where Uriel, the archangel, spoke to Enoch and told him all about the celestials, including their classes, powers, periods, names, places, progressions, months, everything until the end of time. And you see there in verse two that the first law is that the sun and its light arrive at the Western gates. In other words, the sun sets is the first law of the luminaries. And that's what's important to this understanding. This is what's allowing us to unlock the clock is to understand the first law of the luminaries. 
and it's, that is that the sun sets. So with this information and the sunset data for the entire year, we're able to use the clock to determine our seasons, our months, and days. And in the fourth gate, through which the sun with the moon proceeds. In the first part of it, there are 12 open windows from which issues out a flame when they are opened in their proper periods. This is telling us the first day of the first month. But now the next verse says, when the sun rises in heaven, it goes forth through its fourth gate 30 days. And this pattern is going to continue where you see that there are 30, 30, then 31 days in each one of these seasons. 30 days per month or per month and an additional day with some call the seasonal day or the day of remembrance. So when you include these periods along with the sunset data table, you come up with these periods being from March the 20th to about June the 19th, to September the 17th, to December the 17th. Well, what's interesting is when you put those and map those out on the clock, with the time going from 4.45 as the earliest time of sunset, which would be in December, November time frame, and the latest one being at 656 which would be sometime after June the 19th what you end up with is the Sun making the same pattern as the analemma and it starts to look like that this is what your clock would look like if you only looked at it at sunset You say, well, coach in the fight, why are you the one to tell us this? Why haven't we learned about this before? Well, to switch gears a little bit, first of all, we have to give our father credit in heaven. This kind of started when a viewer asked the question, how would we be able to understand the celestials without using some type of man-made device? Well, as you can see, the answer turns out to be sunset is on a precision clock. But the reason why we don't understand this is because we don't understand where the sexagesimal system came from. The base 60 system. We attribute it back to the Babylonians who for a lot of us that throws up a red flag. But you have to understand who did the Babylonians get their information from? Who was the first person to start using the 60 second minute and the 60 minute hour? They say that this was developed around 2000 BC. Well, let me show you who else was developed around 2000 BC. That's our forefather Abraham, who not only got a greater understanding of the celestials, even from his birth, which was tied to a celestial event, but also sojourned in Babylon, where he taught the king a thing or two, even from his youth. So this is obviously who taught him the 60 minute hour and the 60 second minute. Well, it turns out 60 revolutions of the hour hand equals a month. Exactly. 29.54 days repeating. So not only is our clock predicting the sunsets, but it's also predicting the new moons, as long as they are calculated and calibrated correctly. So let's talk about that. When are they to be calibrated? The gist of what we're saying is that if you set your clock correctly, it will not only tell you the sunsets, throughout the year, but it'll tell you the seasons, your months, and your days, simply by knowing the time. You just have to set it correctly. Well, it turns out that our clocks are now set to the equinox, March the 20th. 
at sunset is the time in which our clocks are calibrated. That atomic clock that's programming our automatic clocks for us is set precisely to 6 p.m. on March the 20th, which is the exact time of the sunset on that day. So that's why the clocks on the wall only predict the day is because they are set to the sun time, which is March the 20th, the date of the equinox. It gives us the sun data and it gives us the star data as well. The sun data being that it's set to sunset. Like Enoch said, the first law is sunset. And as part of that first law, the sun and the light arrive at the western gates of heaven. It's telling us that there's gates on the east and on the west. Don't get confused. But it's telling us that this light arrives in the West. Well, that's what's represented by this date here. That's the star date. So you have the sun being represented by the six o'clock at sunset. But you could do that any day to bring the stars into it. You have to set it on March the 20th, which is the spring equinox. That's the way our clocks are set now. So they really only make good predictions of sunset seasons, days, but not months. Unless, of course, you're talking about the Gregorian months, but even those don't fall precisely. If you were to go around the calendar just looking at the 30, 30, and 31 day patterns, you end up with something similar to this where the dates fall around the 19th to 18th of each of the month. But there's one thing to note in here really quickly, and that's how this date doesn't correspond with daylight savings time. If your clock shows daylight savings time, then you will actually be saying seven o'clock instead of six o'clock. And it'll actually not make any sense. Well, when you look very closely, you'll see that they actually changed the time 10 days earlier or around a week earlier. March the 13th is when they changed the time. So when you're tracking it along the days, it appears as though it's going to hit six o'clock at some time. But then all of a sudden on March the 13th, it changes from being 1755 or 555 p.m to 6.56 p.m. So it appears to be disjointed. And to me, it seems as though it was done intentionally. Why would you change the time one week before it's supposed to be calibrated? But anyway, so the time has changed. And I also believe that the calibration date is misaligned. Because when we come back to the book of Enoch, down in verse 11, it says, And in the fourth gate through which the sun with the moon proceeds. So this is saying that it's supposed to be with the moon. And knowing how these gates and portals work, we have the representation of the sun and the stars at the gates. But we still have to wait on the moon to come through the gate before we get a new month. And I believe that's what Enoch is telling us here is that the first day of the first month is the first new moon after the spring equinox. That's when our clock is supposed to be calibrated. And if we do so, our clocks then will not only tell us the seasons and the days, but it would also tell us the months. And if you wanted the clock to actually show you the months, like I said, 60 revolutions of the hour hand will equal 29.54 days. So all you had to do was flip these gears in here to make your hour hand to show you the months. But we'll work on that video when we get that accomplished. All right, so there you have it. Mm -hmm. Reinvention of the clock. Right, and put that data back where it's supposed to be. This very well could be the first time anybody's heard of any of this. Mm hmm. It sure is my first time. Well, all praises to our Father and His Word 
for this information being available to us. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord and shalom. Shalom.